a lot of times I'm walking in the neighborhood. So I'm not a stranger in the neighborhood when I'm walking with the camera. And I always is happy to make photos. The people who live in this Houston neighborhood have grown accustomed to the tall, lanky photographer who simply wanders these streets, capturing moments in life unrehearsed and unstaged. You know, I made a lot of nice pictures over here, including Muhammad Ali and Eddie Lambs. There used to be food signs on the side of the building. And Mohammed Ali was over here, and I made a couple of great photographs. Matter of fact, I photographed in this area quite a bit, in the third ward. Third ward, fourth ward, fifth ward, uh, this is the area which I have documented over the years. There's a negative there that needs to be brought to life. And the only way it can be brought to life is for me to get in the dark room and make the print. Then it comes alive. These days, modern technology has replaced the dark room for most photographers. But when your career has spanned better than 50 years and stacks of unprinted negatives have overrun the kitchen, not to mention the living room, then Early Hudnall's dark room will always play a role in his remarkable body of work. I don't know, I got more than 75 three ring binder notebooks with negatives in them. And then I got probably 100 boxes downstairs with negatives in them. And I probably got close to 10,000 photographs already printed. And this is one of my earlier photographs when I was introduced into Fourth Ward through the Model Cities program. This was uh, President Johnson, Great Society. I walk in the neighborhood quite a bit, and this little boy was coming down the street with the football. So I looked at him, and I stopped with my camera to make his picture, and he posed, and this is the look that he gave me. And this gentleman here worked on the King Ranch. Uh, one day, I was walking, and I saw him, and he was picking up cans. And I walked up and spoke, and we started talking. And he was talking about that he was a cowboy on the King Ranch. My work has been documented in the Smithsonian, in various collections, and it brings joy to people. It brings awareness to people. They speak to people. People identify with it in a certain kind of way, or the humanistic qualities of it. Uh, the Washington Post used some images. Time Magazine ran about an eight to 10 page spread. And a lecture at the Smithsonian at William & Mary uh, in Ohio at the MFA there, Chicago Art Institute, Studio Museum in Harlem, University of Dallas, Southwest Texas State University, Library of Congress, I have worked there. Uh, I have work in Europe, a, a couple of museums and galleries there that sells my work. Your work's been around the world. Yeah, and so I've been very fortunate. Yeah, you, you, you don't seem to have any ego about that. No, why should I? Uh, you, know, you know, I've been blessed to be able to practice my craft, to me, which is the most important thing. It isn't monetary things about it. So what are these, like, these are all wrapped. Where did these come from? Th these were on display at the Holocaust Museum. What about that stack over there? Uh, this stack over here is probably images that I've taken out of frames that what I had to use frame, the same as these images in here. Uh, see, I keep images framed up from time to time, see? And with that, the tour is far from over. Yeah. Early soft-spoken ways and his gentle approach to the human experience have blurred the line between fine art and documentary photography. Not bad for a poor kid from Mississippi. So what's up here? Up, up, up where? Up, up here. This is my studio. My, my, my mother and father divorced. All six of us stayed with my father. He would not let us leave. And we hunted during the fall of the year for rabbits and squirrels, and we went fishing and so forth and on. And, it, and so it was that kind of a lifestyle. We was uh, poor in one way, but we didn't have to want for anything. And uh, when I came to Texas, I brought those memories with me. So when I joined the Marine Corps, after I got out of boot camp, 
I went and bought a little Kodak Instamatic camera. The compassion of what I see, uh, the image of what I see, that's the beauty that I find. And that's the thing that I love so much. For this celebrated photographer, through a half century of accumulated images, the one photograph that moves him the most is a picture he didn't even take. That's me right there, Vietnam. With Henry Montgomery from Florida and Malcolm from Georgia. And this is 1967. It was not good. We was two and a half miles southwest of DMZ. Uh, and it had rain, monsoon season, and that's me in the middle. And we had just got uh, hit by a regiment of North Vietnamese regulars. And when the chopper came in with the flag flying on the side to medevac out some of the wounded, uh, it was one of the best sights that I have ever seen. And whenever I see the flag or hear the national anthem play, I'm always carried back to that time, that moment. How long do you think you'll do this? As long as I possibly can. As long as God want me to or allow me to, as long as I have my health and my strength. You know, as long as I can sit down and I got my eyes and I got my enlarged, I can sit on the stool and print. I can do that. And it is very important, not only to me, but to the community, you know, as well as to humanity. We know a man who says every face has a story and every photo has a purpose. His shutter may open and close in a fraction of a second, but it's that frozen moment in time that early Hutnall says deserves to last forever. Without photography, I would be a lost individual. But wherever I go, I carry a camera, and that'll never stop. Thank you.